Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kayla Ellis with Nursing 510, and today I'm discussing Albert Bandora and his 1977 social learning theory. Albert Bandora was born December 4, 1925, in Mundar, Canada. In 1949, he obtained his BA from the University of British Columbia with the Balakian Award in Psychology. In 1951, he obtained his MA in clinical psychology from the University of Iowa. Bandora's choice of psychology as a career came about by chance. He worked in the woodwork plant during the afternoon to make ends meet, and he was forced to take a heavy course load during the morning. He commuted each morning to the university in a carpool of engineering and pre-med students who started each day very early. His own classes did not start that early. Bandora looked for a filter class. He came upon his first psychology class and found his career. In 1952, he obtained his PhD from the University of Iowa and married his wife, Virginia. She was a nurse. He completed his postdoctoral internship at the Wichita Guidance Center directed by a psychologist. In 1953, Bandora joined the faculty at Stanford University. Finally, in 1964, Bandora became a full-time professor at Stanford University, and he was elected the Fellow of American Psychologists Association, or the APA. In 1974, he was elected president of the American Psychological Association. In 1981, he was elected the president of the Western Psychological Association. Albert Bandora has 16 honorary degrees, including one from Penn State. In 1999, he received the Thorndike Award for Distinguished Contributions of Psychology to Education from American Psychological Association. And in 2002, Bandora was noted by the APA to be the fourth-ranked, most frequently cited psychologist of all time, also the greatest living psychologist. Currently in 2015, Albert Bandora remains the David Starr Jordan Professor Emeritus of Social Science and Psychology at Stanford, and he continues research in psychology daily. He continues to be one of the most recognized theorists who have borrowed theories used by nursing. Albert Bandora was initially influenced by Robert Sears' work on familial backgrounds of social behavior and identifactory learning, or by observing others, in the 1960s. He was also influenced greatly by Miller and Dollard's studies of remodeling and imitation from the 1941 book, Social Learning and Imitation. Also, he was influenced by Lev Vychotsky's studies of social interaction in the development of cognition. Additionally, the experimental demonstration of the social learning theory was based on explanations of key aspects of personality and social development discussed by Freud, such as dependency, aggression, identification, conscious formation, and defense mechanisms. Among the key collaborators with Huell at the Institute, Yale Institute of Human Relation were John Dollard, Neil Miller, and Robert Sears, who sought to reconcile Freudian and Hullian viewpoints. Bandura argued Skinner's and Rudder's learning theories, stating that learning is learned through observation. Skinner's explanation of the gaining of new responses relied on the process of sequential approximation, which required multiple trials, reinforcement for components of behavior, and gradual change. Rudder's theory proposed that the likelihood of a behavior occurring was a function of the subjective expectancy and value of the reinforcement. According to Biandora, Accounts for a response was not yet learned or observed. Additionally, Bandora's influential in the Boo Boo Doll Experiment study from 1961 to 1963 
which he conducted with Dory and Sheila Ross. This observed aggression and non-aggression in children also determined that the behavior after watching an adult model act aggressively towards a booboo doll. They found that the children exposed to the aggressive model were more likely to act in physically aggressive ways. Albert Bandora stated, learning would be exceedingly laborious, not to mention hazardous, if people had to rely solely on effects of their own actions to inform them what to do. Fortunately, most human behavior is learned observationally through modeling. From observing others, one forms an idea of how new behaviors are performed and on later occasions, this coded information serves as a guide for action. In his 1977 Social Leary publication. The Social Learning Theory. Albert Bandora's 1977 concept of social learning influences of learning. He stated learning occurs from observing others, watching and listening. Social learning is determined by a three-way relationship between cognitive factors, environmental factors, and behavior. This is where people imitate and model actions observed. Bandora notes that it is a cognitive progress that takes place in a social context. Additionally, learning specifically occurs through the observation of rewards and punishments, or vicarious reinforcement. And it noted to be applied widely to understanding of aggression. Key concepts. There are 11 key concepts of the social learning theory. Environment, which are factors physically external to the person and their surroundings. Situation with the alert awareness of the environment. Behavioral capability, which is the knowledge and skill to perform a given behavior. Expectations, which is the anticipatory outcome of the behavior that is specific. Expectancies, which are the values that the person places on a given outcome or considered incentives. Self-control, which is the personal regulation of goal-directed behavior or performance. This provides an opportunity for self-monitoring, goal-setting, problem-solving, and self-reward. Observational learning is considered behavioral achievement that occurs by watching the actions and outcomes of others' behaviors. Reinforcements are responses to a person's behavior that increase or decrease the likelihood of reoccurrence considered to promote self-initiated rewards and incentives. Self-efficacy is the person's confidence in performing a particular behavior. Emotional coping responses are strategies or tactics that are used by a person to deal with emotional stimuli. And lastly, reciprocal determinism is the dynamic interaction of the person, the behavior, the environment in which the behavior is performed. It's considered multiple avenues to behavioral change. Bandora stated in 1977 that learning is not purely behavioral, rather it is a cognitive process that takes place in a social context. Noted here are key elements of the theory, observational learning. Modeling. Bandora states identification occurs with a model and involves taking on observed behaviors, values, beliefs, and attitudes of that person. There are three modeling stimuli. Live, which is an actual person and demonstrating the desired behavior, which can be a mother or father. Verbal, which is an individual describing the desired behavior in detail and instructing the individual on how to participate in this behavior. An example is a nurse educator. Symbolic, which is where modeling occurs by means of media, movies, television, the internet, or literature, whether real or fictional. This includes video games and television. Requirements for modeling include 
attention, retention, reproduction, and motivation. Attention is where the observers must attend to the modeled behavior. Attention is impacted by characteristics of the observer and characteristics of the behavior or event. Expectations or what the believe the result will be. Retention is in order to reproduce an observed behavior, observers must be able to remember features of the behavior. This process is influenced by observer characteristics and event characteristics. Reproduction is to reproduce a behavior. The observer must organize responses in accordance with the model. Observer characteristics affecting reproduction include physical and cognitive capabilities and previous performance or reciprocal determinism behavioral change. Motivation. This is the decision to reproduce or to refrain from reproducing. An observed behavior is dependent on the motivations and expectations of the observer, including anticipated consequences and internal standards. Analysis and evaluation. Internal criticism includes adequacy, clarity, consistency, logical development, and level of theory development. Adequacy determines how completely the theory addresses the topics it claims to address. It addresses the theory accounts for subject matter under consideration. The social learning theory is an adequate middle range theory that thoroughly addresses all topics without noted holes or gaps. The definition is clearly defined and able to tell any individual the main implications as it relates to social learning. If scope is wide, which means that it covers many precipitations of the behavior, no further modification is needed. Clearly explains how people acquire and maintain certain behavioral patterns, which also providing the basis for intervention strategies. Clarity addresses if the theory is clearly stated and if the main components to be considered are clear. It determines if the reader easily understands it. The social learning theory demonstrates clarity because the relationship between the concepts are clearly specified within the theory. The concepts clearly explain how behavior is learned through interactions and encounters. Additionally, attention, retention, reproduction, motivation are all correlated. Consistency addresses whether the theory maintains the definitions of the key concepts throughout the explanation of the theory. It determines if it has congruent use of terms, interpretations, principles, and methods throughout. The social learning theory remains fairly consistent across all types of behavioral changes. All key concepts are clearly defined and modeling concepts are defined and noted in order. Terms, principles, and methods are corresponding throughout the theory. Additionally, it is noted that the social learning theory is one of the most widely accepted and useful theories in psychology. Logical development resolves the questions. Does the theory logically flow a line of thought of previous work that has been shown to be true, or does it launch out onto unproven territory? with its assumptions and premises? Do the conclusions proceed in a logical fashion? Social learning theory is influenced by Robert Sears's work on familial backgrounds of social behavior and identifactory learning in the 1960s and Miller and Dollard's study of modeling and imitation from the 1941 book, Social Learning and Imitation. Conclusions made based on Bandora's research are presented logically. An individual identifies a behavior, observes the behaviors, decides whether or not to repeat, and model the behavior. Nurses have applied social learning principles successfully when working with teenage mothers and addressing alcoholism among older adults. Level of theory development. It is consistent with conceptualization of the middle range theory. Social learning theory is consistent with key concepts of the middle range theory. Social learning theory started with an empirical phenomenon of observational learning and was later verified by data. 
Middle range theories are more practical and applicable in day-to-day -day practices. External criticism includes complexity, discrimination, reality, converge, pragmatic, scope, and significance. Complexity reviews how many concepts are involved as key components of the theory. The social learning theory is quite a complex theory as noted by Bandora in his literature. However, the basics of the theory are easily understood without an extensive description. There are over 10 key concepts that are importantly related. Additionally, there are a lot of variables related to the modeling, including modeling stimuli and requirements or steps. Given the complexity of the theory, it has been stated in the literature that it is sometimes difficult to measure and assess. Discrimination addresses whether the hypothesis generated by the theory led to research results that could not be arrived at using some other nursing theory. It decides if it is precise and clear boundaries and definitive parameters of the subject matter. Social learning theory is noted to have clear boundaries and parameters and is one of the many cognitive learning theories. Evaluating behavioral change depends on the factors, environment, people, and behavior. I think that the social learning theory is responsible for certain interventions and educational programs in nursing. There are no other theories that can allow for the specific framework or hires for these specific patients or populations. The concepts of the theory, along with modeling, allow for the theory to be specific to itself. Reality conference determines if the theory's underlying assumptions ring true, decides if the theory's assumptions represent the real world and if it represents the real world of nursing. Does the theory reflect the real world as understood by the reader? The social learning theory is relevant to healthcare and communication. First, the theory deals with cognitive emotional aspects and aspects of behavior for understanding behavioral change. Second, the concepts of the theory deliver ways for new behavioral research in health education. Finally, ideas for other theoretical areas such as psychology are welcome to provide new insights and understanding. The social learning theory approach has its origins in traditional theories of classical and operant conditioning. The behaviorist perspective. Behaviorists try to explain the causes of behavior by studying only those behaviors that can be directly observed and messaged. Pragmatic determines if the theory can be operationalized in real life setting. The social learning theory is relevant for designing health education, and health behavioral programs. This theory explains how people obtain and maintain certain behavioral patterns observed. The theory can also be used for providing the basis for intervention strategies for pe these people. Additionally, the social learning theory has been used to explain the so-called cycle of violence or more technically the intergenerational transmission of aggression. The basic idea that is if you have been a victim of physical abuse as a child, you are more likely to be an abusing parent. And also increases the chances that you will be a wife or a husband of a batter. Unfortunately, a major difficulty is that this theory is complex and not easily measured or assessed. Scope determines how broad or narrow the range of the phenomenon is that the theory covers. Despite being a middle range theory that is applicable to practice, the social learning theory has a wider scope in which it has somewhat all encompassing range of phenomena covered. Multiple populations, issues, and behaviors can be researched. However, the theory focuses mainly on aggression and deviant behavior of children. Significance is the result of the research that is conducted because of the hypothesis generated by the theory having an impact on the way nurses carry out their nursing intervention in the real world, or does it merely describe what nurses do? Does this theory address essential, not irrelevant issues to the discipline? 
The significance of the social learning theory in nursing as a result of research is significant to the impact of nurses carrying out interventions to help their parents, their patients, specifically certain patient populations. Specific issues in nursing include substance abuse patients, alcoholics, and domestic violence, and child abuse patients. Conscious assessment of these types of patients should be made and hypothesis generation generated and interventions put into place. Utility determines if nurses can use the theory to generate hypotheses and if they are researchable. Nurses can utilize the theory to generate hypotheses and risk reduction of destructive behaviors of adolescents and also cyclic behavior of domestic violence victims. Hypotheses can be made and researched about these high-risk populations and determine whether the behavior is learned through observational learning or modeling. Interventions can be populated related to these results. Tools and instruments. Based on the review of literature, it is obvious that self-descriptive questionnaires are widely used in research based on concepts of the social learning theory, along with surveys, videotaping, direct observation, and interviews. Review of the literature. During my literature review, it is key that Bandora's social learning theory is an essential borrowed theory used by nursing. There are multiple nursing articles published that cite the use of Bandora's theory. Although I have only included three articles obtained in my literature review, there are many more that I have referenced. Article number one is a 2015 publication from the Journal of Health Communication. The title is An Applied Test of the Social Learning Theory of Deviance to College Alcohol Use. It is a randomized cross-sectional study that examines the effects of social learning on deviant behavior and alcohol use in college students. Several hypotheses about influences on college drinking derived from social learning theory were tested and confirmed in this study. Researchers, college administrators, law enforcement, and health officials, along with local representatives, have recommended the use of increased enforcement of alcohol-related laws. With the use of a questionnaire, it was determined that this study suggests that social learning theory shows qualified promise as a conceptual framework for enforcement campaigns at decreasing drinking on and around college campuses. Three sets of hypotheses were derived and generally supported, but with differing levels of different contexts. Article number two is also a 2015 publication in the Internal Journal of Adolescent Medicine and Health. It is titled, How Adolescents Learn About Risk Perception and Behavior in Regards to Alcohol Use in Light of Social Learning, a Qualitative Study in Bogota, Colombia. It is a qualitative research study, part of a larger study exploring the social representation of risk and alcohol use in adolescents in their communities, while using key concepts from Bandora's social learning theory. Data was obtained by observation or semi-structural interviews. It was determined that adolescents can identify several risks related to use of alcohol, which for the most part appear to have learned through verbal instruction. However, this risk recognition does not appear to correlate with their behavior. Parental modeling, along with messages conveyed by the media, represent two other significant sources of learning that are constantly contraindicating the message relayed through verbal instruction and correlate to a greater extent with adolescent behavior. Article number three is a 2003 publication in the Journal of Advanced Nursing. It is titled Self-Efficacy Training for Patients with End-Stage Renal Disease. It is a randomized controlled study. The purpose was to examine the effectiveness of self-efficacy training and social learning on fluid intake compliance. This is specific to patients with end-stage renal disease. The intervention was based on Bandora's theory and included the educational component, performance mastery, experience sharing, and stress management. The outcome measures 
were the mean body weight gain between dialysis sessions. Data was collected at baseline one, three, and six months following the intervention and analyzed by descriptive and repeated measures. The study supports that the effectiveness of Vandora's social learning and self-efficacy training in controlling mean body weight gains of end-stage renal disease patients receiving hemodialysis. Application of the theory to research and practice. Again, many recent nursing articles reference Vandora's social learning theory and is considered highly applicable in nursing practice. Vandora's social learning theory is noted for successful implementation of interventions and educational programs. For an example, the study of developmentally supportive care training program by Lou 2003 supports care for preterm infants based on Vandora using observational learning and modeling. Additionally, the 2004 study by Doherty, Piper, and Fraz is based on Bandora's theory, designed to improve functioning in those patients with recent ICD implant. The article describes that the social learning theory, in particular, self-efficacy, is an individual's conviction and in one's ability to execute a particular behavior that is required to produce a particular outcome. Behavioral change and maintenance are functions of both expectations about the outcomes that will result from engaging in a behavior and expectations about one's ability to execute the behavior that is required. Self-efficacy relates to beliefs about capabilities of performing specific behaviors in particular situations, not to a general personality trait overall. Thus, self-efficacy expectations will vary greatly depending on the particular task and the, and the context. Self-efficacy affects emotional reactions such as anxiety, distress, and thought process, especially to those patients who are new to ICD implants. Another research article, Say 2003, describes a social learning theory-based intervention to promote adherence to a specific diet for end-stage renal patients. The social learning theory, as described throughout this video, is significantly related to adolescent health promotion programs and is one of the most theories used to design of education programs for patients of abuse. The literature supports that the social learning theory is ready to support studies leading to achievement of knowledge for evidence-based practice in nursing, education, interventions, and programs based on the borrowed theory used by nursing has been influential for over 38 years to practice and there is no need for alteration in my eyes. Thank you and have a good day.